Justified Badge Item Number SCP-1339 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-1339 is to be kept in a safe at Site-56 and may only be accessed with permission from Dr. Robert Williams. Testing has been suspended until further notice. Description SCP-1339 is a police badge with no markings of a police department or rank. No badge similar to SCP-1339 has been found as of 2000th blank, March 1st. The badge's abnormal qualities are only apparent when worn. When SCP-1339 is fastened to the clothing of a human being, other species may be affected by SCP-1339. See test log. Henceforth referred to as the subject, they will be convinced that any actions they observe or commit are entirely justified and valid. See Addendum 1339-1. When asked about events, the subject will always rationalize and defend the action. Assessments of motor skills, problem solving, and cognitive abilities have all proven that SCP-1339 does not impair mental facilities. Foundation psychologists and speech pathologists have noticed that the speaking patterns of SCP-1339 subjects resemble those of psycho and sociopaths. Once SCP-1339 is removed from the subject, he or she will immediately feel large amounts of guilt and depression, even if they committed no morally or ethically wrong actions while wearing it. Attempts at therapy have worked along the same lines as others with depression or guilt, with therapists noting that patients are much more resistant to both antidepressants and traditional psychiatry. Amnestics have proven useful in removing memories of the digressions, though feelings of guilt are still reported by subjects. In a majority of cases where treatment is not received, the subject will commit suicide. On several occasions, the subject has confessed to unknown crimes in suicide notes. Despite the possibility of reopening cold cases or finding missing persons, it has been decided that testing is to be suspended until further notice. Addendum 1339-1 Subjects have been exposed to, and in some cases performed, murder, mass murder, torture, forced starvation, and non-medical amputation without incident and upon questioning, would claim all of the above actions perfectly reasonable and right. Interview 1339-1, D345781, subject using SCP-1339, Dr. Tourist, interviewing D345781. Forward, D345781 had been wearing SCP-1339 for several days, during which he had personally seen the death of Agent Larson, the termination of several D-Class personnel, as well as a violent escape attempt by SCP-. Dr. Tourist. How are you feeling, D345781? D345781. I'm good. You? Dr. Tourist. Fine. Now, how do you feel about what you've seen here at the Foundation? I know some of your colleagues were disturbed slightly. D345781. I said I'm good. I understand why you people need to do these things. Dr. Tourist. You feel no guilt over your involvement. D345781. Those things needed to be done. Dr. Tourist. Why do you believe that exactly? D345781. Those people were unnecessary. They did their jobs. Then they died. They complained too much anyhow. Especially blank. He didn't stop until data expunged. At least that made him quiet. Closing statement. D345781 had SCP-1339 removed shortly after this interview. Subject began sobbing and collapsed into a catatonic state. Before collapsing, he yelled incoherently for several minutes at researchers and doctors, repeatedly swearing at them. D-345781 was returned to his cell and remained in his bed for a majority of a week. Following one week, he was found dead in his cell of self-inflicted stab wounds. A crude shank made of a toothbrush was determined to be the suicide weapon. A note, which was found in the cell, contained a detailed confession to three crimes. The robbery of a convenience store in Columbus, Ohio in 1932 the murder of a woman in Ithaca, New York in 2003, and a physical attack on a man in Mesopotamia in 4750 BC. These crimes are all currently being researched by Foundation historians. Following this incident, psychiatric counseling was declared mandatory for all subjects wearing SCP-1339. Testing Log 1339-1 Subject 1 Parakeet Duration 30 seconds Actions None Results Parakeet remained still, and researchers noted nothing out of the ordinary. Following this test, it is believed that non-primate animals are not influenced by SCP-1339. Subject: One common chimpanzee, Pantroglodytes. Duration: 24 hours. Actions: Subject was observed eating, climbing trees, and harassing other chimps. Results: 
After removal of SCP-1339, the chimp appeared to experience depression similar to that of wild animals who were recently captured, though the subject was born and raised in captivity. After several weeks, the subject was observed to be acting normally. Subject, D-38546. Duration, 30 seconds. Actions, none. Results, D-38546 remained standing in front of researchers while wearing SCP-1339, but experienced heavy depression upon removal. While in therapy, subject confessed to feelings of guilt over the death of a childhood pet, an incident found to be true by contacting family of D-38546, the beating and killing of a homeless man in 1905, 82 years before the birth of the subject, and several foundation projects, including data expunged. D-38546 was given a Class A amnestic immediately and was terminated on schedule. Note, yes, SCP-1339 has helped local authorities in some cases. However, we cannot waste resources on giving psychotherapy and pills to subjects, and showing up at the sheriff's door with a list of unsolved murders and missing persons from decades ago is not exactly the most subtle thing the Foundation has ever done. Testing is suspended from now on unless approved and supervised by the senior staff, Dr. Easton. Testing Log 1339-2 New testing has been authorized temporarily by Dr. Kiorst of Site-56 for the express purpose of determining if subjects using SCP-1339 are valid for use as Foundation personnel. Due to their lack of guilt or remorse while wearing SCP-1339, users have been speculated to be superior to regular personnel in dealing with more morally questionable actions performed by the Foundation. Subject, D-84766 Duration, 2 months Actions D-84766 was given private quarters for the duration of the experiment, the only noticeable feature of which was a standard, 24-inch monitor, which was built into the wall for the express purpose of the experiment. Following the attachment of SCP-1339, D-84766 was led to the room and locked inside. Meals were delivered by staff three times a day. During the day, between the hours of 6 a.m. and 8 p.m. GMT, the Monitor broadcast a live feed of Foundation activities declared to be the most morally questionable by personnel. Staff delivering meals were given the ability to request that the feed be muted or turned off while they visited the quarters. Following two months of exposure, D-84766 was brought out of her quarters and given a psychiatric evaluation by Dr. Sampson, who declared that D-84766 was mentally healthy. D-84766 had SCP-1339 removed after evaluation. The subject entered a catatonic state upon removal, and began screaming incoherently. Nearby staff reported that the subject attempted to remove her own ears and eyes before being restrained by security. After being given a sedative, D-84766 was returned to her quarters, where she refused to speak to personnel for 13 weeks. Attempts at administering therapy failed due to the subject's lack of response. On September 3, 2005, visiting staff reported that the subject was lying face down on the floor. Medical staff discovered that D-84766 was unconscious, and she was shortly thereafter transferred to the medical ward. After five hours in the medical ward, the subject regained consciousness. While in the medical ward, the subject was responsive to an interview by Dr. Sampson, see interview 1339-2. Following the interview, the subject stabbed herself 13 times in the chest, neck, and face with an empty syringe. Death was caused by piercing of the subject's jugular. No note was found on the scene, but Dr. Sampson did produce a paper the subject gave to him during their interview. Interview 1339-2 D-84766, subject of SCP-1339 experimentation. Dr. Sampson, interviewing subject. Dr. Sampson, how are you feeling, D-84766? D-84766, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All of it. Dr. Sampson, sorry for what? D-84766, you know. I know. I know what I did. Dr. Sampson, ma'am, you did not leave your quarters once during your wearing of SCP-133. D-84766, don't. No, I can't. Can't. I was wrong. Wrong, but I was right. It's all right, but it's all wrong. Right and 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 wrong. Closing statement. Following the end of the log, D-84766 subject threw a piece of paper at Dr. Sampson. D-84766 then grabbed a syringe and committed suicide as outlined above. Dr. Sampson immediately handed the note over to Foundation authorities. The note reads as follows. Topeka, Kansas, 1881. Murder. Mine. Beijing, China, 1921. Burglary. Mine. Blank. Site 56, 2005. Redacted. All mine. 
The note continues for several paragraphs like this, naming locations, dates, and crimes, and naming the subject as the perpetrator. The paper ends abruptly, indicating a date that has not yet occurred and naming a yet unknown individual. Attempts to find this individual have been unsuccessful. Subject, Dr. Tamlin. Duration, five weeks. Actions. Dr. Tamlin performed his usual duties as administrator, among them approving testing and overseeing experiments. During the time SCP-1339 was worn, Dr. Tamlin approved all applications for experimentation given to him, eventually reaching the point of obviously humorous or false applications being approved. Among them requests to set Keter class SCPs free, and petitions to promote violent D-class personnel to 5 All approved applications were later vetoed by staff. Results Dr. Tamlin was deemed psychologically healthy following removal, though his wife and colleagues reported that he was notably less sociable. After two weeks, Dr. Tamlin failed to report to work, and agents were sent to his house to investigate. Once there, Agent Jotes and Agent Howard discovered the bodies of Dr. Tamlin and his wife, victims of an apparent murder-suicide. Both died of multiple stab wounds, Dr. Tamlin self-inflicted. A note was discovered near his body, in which he confessed guilt to multiple crimes, including the murder of his wife. Note, that is it. This thing makes you able to handle some of what we do for a little while, but we can't have everybody involved with a messy accident wind up killing themselves or others. All testing is ended. SCP-1339 has to be left in a locked storage area at Site-56, permanently. May those poor fuckers rest in peace, if they can. Dr. Kiorst.